Roses are probably the best known garden bloom worldwide. And these modern roses are just things of exquisite beauty. But have you ever wondered how they come to be? Today, we're gonna find out. We're in the propagation greenhouse at Mid-South Roses in Brighton, Tennessee, and I'm standing next to Whit Wells. This is his place. And he's the man who creates incredible roses through the techniques he's gonna show us today. Now, I know you told me, Whit, that seed is one of the main ways to create new roses. That's right. Of course, we're here at the absolute wrong time of year because the roses are blooming, not setting That's seed. Right. But, uh, but you told me you've got a few little orphan seedlings still left here, even this late. And you can see, tell me about how you plant rose seed. Well, I fix the bottom of the soil and I put some planting mix on top and then I put the little seed in and it's barely covering them up about a quarter of an inch. And you gather the rose I hips gather in the fall? I rose hips when they're ripe, mm -hmm. when they turn colors. And clean the... Mm -hmm. I clean it. Mm -hmm. I put them in a blender and cut all the pulp and stuff off mm -hmm. and then wash all that through a sieve and then... Right, get the, the pure seed. seed. Just yeah. Just down the seed. And then you put them, keep them cold. Keep right. them in a Like so many plants, yeah, you stratify them, basically. Stratify them meaning you fake a winter. You tell, make them think that they've gone through a winter just like they would have if they were out in the wild. And then you plant them just like right. you said. Now how long does it take them to come up? Uh, usually within about three weeks they'll start coming up. Wow, wow. Uh, and they'll continue, some of them up to two years. Wow. Longer if you kept the seed trays up. Right, right. I and don't normally keep them that long. But. How long do you let them grow on in the tray before you pot them on? Normally, I let them stand there until they get about six inches tall. Oh, wow, that's pretty big. Take, oh, yeah, they're big plants when I take them out. Yeah, okay. And then I transplant them into, ten, into six inches tall. Like pot. this over here? Like these. So these are, how old are these? They were planted probably in the last part of February. Okay, and it's now June, so yeah. that's what you're looking at. Well, this is quite the mist bench cutting operation you've got, Wit. Well, thank you, ma'am. This is obviously where you're propagating a whole lot of named varieties, I'm thinking. Yeah, some numbered and some named. Mm -hmm. So some of the ones that you grew from seed and then selected, this is how you... That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And these are the ones that you sell? Yeah. Okay. And I see you've got nice little babies. Let me see if I can pull them out without hurting them here. You've got several stuck in a pot. Yeah, I do. And how long? You've got obviously an intermittent mist that keeps these moist, and there's a plastic cover that keeps the humidity high. How long does it take them to root? You can Usually see about three weeks. Starting to come out of the bottom there, little roots. Three weeks. Is this a springtime operation mostly? Well, no, I can do it practically all year. Really? Yeah. How cool. Can you show me how you prepare a rose for to stick as a cutting? All right, I'd take the... Oh. Man, that's worth propagating. What do you think? Mm, okay, so we've got a nice, and, big, sturdy branch. And I normally try to take at least three leaflets, I mean three okay. bird three. eyes. Right. And I try to, now this one has got some extra big foliage, yeah. so I mm -hmm. take that and all too. Okay, so there's the start of your cutting. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's what I'd root. I'd, I'd okay. really take this set of leaves off. Okay. It gets too big in your mist frame. Yeah, and they all crowd each other. And I scrape about that okay. deep on it. So That's he's put cool. a wound on one side of the bottom of that stem. That increases the, the area that wants to throw out roots. And then I dip it in a part called dip and grow. It's a rooting it's hormone. It's a hormone. Mm -hmm. And I dip them in it and then I lay them down. Let it and when dry. I get enough mm -hmm. to put in a tray, I just stop and stick them all in the tray. Yep, and you've got and this it, set it'll up. it change right. colors on them. Mm-hmm. Wow. That hormone with you. And then three weeks later, it's starting to root. Later, you gotta That's it. pretty quick. So if you wanted to do this at home, you could basically mimic this setting, maybe not the mist bench, but I have done it in a pot with a big plastic tent over it in the shade. You never yeah. want it in the sun because covered things in the sun turns into an oven. So uh, you'll steam hot. cook the thing. But in shade, in hormone, in a pot, like a big Ziploc bag closed, you want real high humidity around it, you can grow your own. Now the third way we're gonna talk about is the last and most common way that roses are produced commercially, and that is grafting, bud grafting to be specific. And then when you go to the garden center and you buy one of those box roses or whatever, 
they're almost universally grafted. Hybrid teas are grafted because they don't make a very good root system That's right. on their own. So they graft them. And I know in the South, there are some graft root stocks that are better. Better. Yeah. 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 Fortuniana is one of the newer Fortuniana, ones. okay. And <clears throat> it'll grow a whole lot bigger than most roses. Okay, so it makes it but really vigorous. You have to winter protect the buds a whole lot better than you do on the, the other roses. Okay, in other words, where the graft union yeah. is. But we're going to show you today, briefly, sort of, how you bud graft a rose. And the first thing I want Wit to do is show this thing. This is called a bud knife, specifically made for bud grafting. There's a tool for everything, but that's what it is. Yeah, this, this top is to peel the bark back from right. before you split it. And I want to show you first, this is a bud graft. That's a bud. That's the bud that's cut off of a stalk. You can see there's the bud right there. There was a leaf coming out here. We picked the leaf off. There's always a bud right at the base of the leaf. And Wit has cut a sliver just like this. You can see where it came from. That's exactly what it was like. Just cut that out. That's what gets grafted onto the root stalk. And when you pretending this is a root stalk. Of course, this would be standing up. Yeah, but. You would just. Slice cut. open the bark. And then you, you take your knife and cut an angle like here. An angle like that. And then slip that bark. I mean that that little notch, notch there the is layer. is to pull the bark back. It's bark really hard back. to unfortunately it's hard to show on camera because your hands have to be in the way <laughs> doing it. Yeah. But but what happens is in that slit and that bark pulled back, this slides in and then it is wrapped. There is special tape. This is a plastic stretchy tape that wraps. And tape. Right. It's, uh, it's both wax it and tape. And that little thing right there, that little bud sticking out, is the graft. Everything that's growing up above here is just rootstock, root stock. right? And once this graft takes and starts growing, what happens to you this? Cut that off. It's just gone. This card. Yeah. Because what you want is everything below the graft. And that will, will grow into whatever variety yeah. you've got. You can see, I mean, it requires a little bit of specialized equipment, but it isn't that hard to do. I graft a lot of things in my job. So um, practice makes perfect with grafting. Wit, I want to thank you so much for showing us everything that you've shared and your expertise and all the years of practice and everything. And it's wonderful to be well, here. Well, thank you. Enjoy having you all here. Oh, it's been great. What a treat.